So this is a video tutorial about the NASA Eclipse website. For my students, there's a link for this under your recent and future eclipses. For other people, I'll put the link in the video description on YouTube. So when you go to this website, you're dominated by information about the current eclipse. But there's also information on solar eclipses, lunar eclipses, and transits in general. I want my students to go to solar eclipses here. Again, the solar eclipses starts out with the current one, because that's what most people are interested in. But if you scroll down a little bit further, there's information on both past and future eclipses. And there's several different ones here. We're going to focus on the decade solar eclipse tables, and we'll be looking at a few of these. The current decade, the 2011 to 2020, is the default one, but you can come up here to look on some of the others. So when I scroll down here, again, there's a lot of information, probably more than we actually need. But the very first eclipse for this decade is up here at the top of the chart, January 4th, 2011, and it was a partial eclipse. If I click on the date, it brings me to sort of my standard table. And again, there's a lot more information on here and you don't need to understand it all. If I zoom in, the top part gives me the date. It gives me some specific information about times in units that astronomers use, as well as exact locations in some astronomers' coordinates. The most useful part is going to be this map here and that shows you what part of the world actually gets to see this eclipse. Since this is a partial eclipse, it shows this region here. Now, this is the edge of it. If you're in by this line, then you see about 20%, about 40%, about 60%. The highest this one gets up to is about 80%. And this one is visible from parts of Europe, Asia, and Africa. If it's just a partial eclipse, that's most of the information that you're going to have there. If I come down here, I can look at, say, the first total eclipse. Again, if I click on the date here, it brings up one of these particular maps. And we can see for this one that it started off over here in Australia and mostly goes across the empty ocean. This is another reason why eclipses are considered really rare, because a total solar eclipse is only visible for the total part along this thin blue line, and oftentimes it's going to be over water where there's nobody who's going to be able to see it. Again, it marks out who can see 80% partial eclipse, who can see 60, 40, etc., all the way out to the very edge that people cannot see the eclipse if they're not within this region. For the middle point of this, which is called greatest eclipse, there's additional information on the UT time, that's universal time, and the specific latitude and longitude and the duration of that particular eclipse. Now, in addition to these maps, if it's an annular or a total eclipse, there's also a link to a Google map. So for here, it brings up a Google map. And if I scroll, scroll the page down first, and then I can scroll in and out, I can see information. Now, greatest eclipse is marked by default. But if I wanted to, say, find out what it might be like over here, I can find out for that particular location. And it tells me the latitude and longitude how long the eclipse lasts, and what's the start time, the maximum, and the end time. It's still listing my time in universal time, not local time. So there's a little bit of extra information on those ones if I look at the Google Maps. So if we come down here to the August 21st, that's the one most people are talking about right now because it goes right across the continental United States. I'm going to show you just a little bit more information here, coming back to some of these tables, to just give you a view on a few other things here. So for example, if I were to go back and look at some of the older eclipses, I can look down at those information as well. Now I showed you partial, I showed you total. There's also annular eclipses, like this one. And again, this one is mostly over the water. 
So the locations inside the dark red path here are again where you would see an annular eclipse. The regions on the sides would see a partial eclipse. And you're able to see that again this one is mostly going over water, although it does skirt just a little bit over here on some land. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an information on what's available here on the NASA Eclipse website if you're looking at any particular dates.